What's up everybody, it's Animage here, we are back here again with the Blue Lock Bang And today we have to talk about Ryo and Nagi With the recent chapters, we saw that their values went down once again Which I kind of expected, at least for Nagi I actually predicted that Nagi's value was going to go down again And his downfall arc was going to continue in his match against Baro and the Ubers But I actually expected Ryo to let go of Nagi and show that he could fight on his own and prove his value during this match, but that did not happen. So I need to talk about both of them, especially Nagi, and show and basically say what they need to do to prove their values and make sure that they make the U20 roster. This is less of a prediction video, more of what I would do if I was writing a story to let them both improve. So, with all that being said, let's get right into the video. First and foremost, Rio has to drop Nagi, like completely drop him. Where he is right now, Nagi is completely dragging him down, uh, which is kind of funny because it started off with Ryo dragging Nagi down and Nagi letting go of Ryo, causing Nagi to approve. Now it has to be Ryo letting go of Nagi so that he can approve because Nagi is dragging him down. As we saw with the conversation that Ryo had with Agi, Agi has talked to Ryo and said that, hey, if you keep going with Ryo, if you keep, um, Pairing up with Nagi, you are going to continue to fall with him. And even though Ryo did say that he is going to continue to fight with Nagi, I do not see that happening. I def I see him letting go of Nagi during the um, match against FC Barcha. Um, we have had Ryo mention twice, two games in a row, how if something doesn't change, their values are going to keep dropping. In their match against PXG, he told Nagi, hey, we need to... We need to change gears. We need to fix what's going on between us so that we can continue to prove. And this match, he mentions how the values is continue to go down. If things continue to go down this route, the values are going to continue to go down where they might not even make the U20 roster. So he has to be the one to let go of Nagi right now. Because as I said, Nagi, not only is Nagi bringing him down, but from a writer's perspective, it just makes sense. Like where Nagi is at right now, he's, he's not even in the right mindset. To let go of Rio and to approve on his own right now. He is in his own other world. He's completely satisfied with just beating Asagi, even though number one, he ended up losing that match. And number two, Asagi, right now, where Asagi is, is higher than where Nagi was during his original bid. I believe Nagi's original bid was 88 million yen, and Asagi's at 150 million yen. So, like, he is completely satisfied with beating Asagi where he shouldn't be. And I think Ryo has to recognize that Nagi is completely satisfied with the player he is. And he needs to let go with Na of Nagi so he can improve. And for me, what I would say his game plan needs to be is to just keep using that copy ability he has. Because I believe that Ryo has the highest ceiling because of his weapon. He can, We always saw that he can copy a new Gen 11 player like um, Itoshi Sai. I almost called him in. But he, he was able to copy Itoshi Sai's playstyle. So why does he continue that and make a new strike, a new chameleon mode? Right now he has the chameleon striker mode where he um, combines with size abilities to become to help him score more and create opportunities for his team. But why doesn't he copy other new Gen 11 players like um, Don Lorenzo and Michael Kaiser? I know that both of them have more physical um, weapons, but with his training with Chris Prince, he can improve his physique, which can help him copy physical weapons so he could eventually copy um copy Lorenzo's dribbling zombie like dribbling and his man marking and maybe even eventually copy Michael's Kaiser's Kaiser impact like I know that Kaiser impact like it's the fastest shot swing that we've seen in the series but like there are drills and um workouts that you can use to improve your shot swing so it's totally possible for Chris Prince to create a new regimen for Rio to prove his shot swing and copy Michael Kaiser's Kaiser Impact. Now, of course, it won't be as fast as Kaiser Impact, but if he's able to copy Michael Kaiser's Kaiser Impact, if he's able to copy that weapon, he can shoot up even more as a player. So I really think that's what his goal needs to be as a player, just to really utilize his copying ability to his fullest potential. Not just, like he said that his... um. That he, the best player that he could think of for himself is a combination of the Atoshi, Ato, uh, Atoshi brothers. But I don't think that's, uh, that's necessarily true. There's so many players that are 
at wins level or at size level or even above size level. Like, I could see him really, like, focusing on his physique to improve his physique to potentially copy more physical weapons. Like, imagine if he's able to copy Noel Noah's ambidextrous tyranny. Like, he could really improve as a player, so he really needs to improve his physique so that he can copy more physical weapons and just improve all his copying his copying ability to really improve as a player. As for Nagi, the thing that you have to fix with Nagi is very simple. It's his mindset. As I said before, he is completely satisfied with beating Asagi, but he shouldn't be. Because as I said, he lost that match and he was only able to score once. And he was only able to do that when he was paired up with Ryo. Right now, Nagi is not a player that can fight on his own. But Ryo is, but Chigiri is, but Isagi is, but Michael Kaiser is. Like, all these players can fight on, on their own, but Nagi can't. Not for them. Like, I know he has that new um, new play style that he got from Chris Prince that allows him not really to fight alone, but his um, zero reset turn, which allows him to create the flow of the game. But that's all he can do is create the flow of the game. He can't really fight on his own, really. But like, really, like, he needs to fix that mindset. And not be satisfied with beating Asagi. Honestly, he should have saw beating Asagi as a stepping stone to even higher goals. Because, like, yeah, Asagi's a great player. But, like, he's not the peak of soccer. You know what I mean? Like, isn't beating Asagi isn't the same thing as winning the World Cup. Um, winning the U-20 World Cup. Winning, um... God, I can't think of any soccer trophies at the moment. But you guys could probably think of some. So, like... Even though that is a great goal for him, it's a great goal, but, like, it isn't a goal that he should be satisfied with. You know what I'm saying? Because, as I said, Sagi is, has, his valuation is way higher than Nagi's at the moment. It's way higher than his original bid. And where he is now, if he was to have a rematch with Sagi, he would get destroyed. Like, absolutely demolished, and it's not even close. Like, the matchup between Sagi and, Na and Nagi is no longer close, but it should be, but it isn't because his mindset is in the right place. So he really needs to look inside him and see why he wants to continue playing football. And if he can't answer that question, I would just say quit, honestly. Like, he just, just quit. Like, if all that matters to him is beating Asagi, he could technically say he's done that, even though, you know, as I said, he did lo end up losing the match against Asagi. But after that match, he had a higher bid than Asagi, so he could technically say, hey, I beat Asagi, I accomplished my goal, I can quit soccer. Obviously, obviously, that's not going to happen, you know, because Nagi is one of the biggest characters in Blue Lock. He, along with Rayo, have a side manga and a movie coming out eventually, so they're very popular, so I don't think not, the writer is just going to write out Nagi. I think he is going to help his, he, he is going to have Nagi's mindset approve, um, Financially, it's going to prove so much higher. It's going to be so much better. He's going to be so much better player than he is now if he just improves that mindset. So, for those, those are the two things I would have him do. I would have Rio just drop Nagi completely and focus on improving as his, as a player himself and showcase that he can fight on his own, which he can. Like with his copy ability, as I said, he has the highest ceiling imaginable. So he is a player that can really fight on his own. Which I think he's going to do, if not in the boxing match, he's going to do it in the U20 match. But, like, he has to let go of Nagi because he can't keep, like, Nagi dragging him down. Because right now, Nagi's just not in the right position to approve as a player until he finishes his uh, mindset. Which I which I would say is, like, his biggest flaw. Oh, that's actually a good video. I should do a video on that. Each blue, Tell me know in the comments if you guys want to see me do a video on each blue lock player's greatest strength and their, like, biggest weakness or their fatal fall because I can think of a ton right now on the top of my head, but that's a video for another day. Um, with all that being said, um, I will stop the video right now, right here. Um, don't, don't forget to like this like this video, comment, um, share with your friends, and hit that subscribe button with a notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.